I need eyeglasses and hearing aids. What that means, when someone is speaking, I need help seeing who is speaking, and I also need help hearing what is said. Uh, this morning, we reflect on Jesus' birth from a spiritual perspective. We put on eyeglasses, put on hearing aids. We will attempt to briefly, but, but look carefully at who is speaking. And we'll attempt to listen closely to what is being said. Uh, who is speaking? What it says in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son. The son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. When Jesus was born and during his life, Jesus spoke, but it was really God the Father speaking through him. Um, Jesus said, I gave them the words that you gave me and accepted them. The words that Jesus spoke were the words the Father gave him to speak. At this time, we appropriately focus on the Son. You don't see many Christmas cards featuring God the Father, but he is the one that's speaking through the Son. Theologian Langdon Gilkey, in a book by Philip Yancey, is what he said. Theologian Langdon Gilkey said, if evangelical Christianity has a heresy, it is the omission of God the Father, the creator, preserver, and ruler of all human history and every human community in favor of Jesus the Son, who is related to individual souls and their desires. Um, our focus on Jesus can eclipse our focus of the Father. God the Father is the one who spoke through the Son. Jesus came to reveal the Father. So that's who's speaking. The Son is speaking, but really the Father, it's the Father's voice. It's Jesus speaking the words the Father gives him to speak. So that clears that one up. What is being said? What is the message from God the Father through God the Son? Uh, an angel spoke to Mary. Here's what um, the angel said. Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. Among other things, what he tells Mary is do not be afraid. Um, an angel spoke to Joseph in a dream, and this is what the angel said to Joseph. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid, there it is again, to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. The message to Joseph and Mary from the Father so far is, do not be afraid. Matthew goes on to point out that Jesus fulfilled a prophecy made 700 years earlier by Isaiah the prophet. And here's what Isaiah wrote. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said to the prophet, the virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Jesus fulfilled, conservatively, they say, 300 Old Testament prophecies. And a professor of probability at Westmont College tried to figure out the probability that one person would fulfill just eight of the prophecies, let alone 300. They conservatively estimated that the chance of one person fulfilling just eight of the prophecies would be one in 10 to the 17th power, which means one out of 10 with 17 
zeros. Um, how many is that? Well, suppose we take a silver dollar or tickets. Suppose we take a ticket and put te 10 tickets in a hat. Scramble them up, mark one ticket, and have someone come up and reach in. The chances that they will pick that right ticket is one in 10 with no zeros. How much is one in 10 with 17 zeros? So here's what you do. You take 10 with 17 zeros, silver dollars, and dump them in Texas. Just a whole kit and glue, you dump them in Texas. 10 with 17 zeros, silver dollars, will fill the entire state of Texas two feet deep. So two feet deep, all completely covering the state of Texas. So now let's take someone and blindfold them. Let's mark one silver dollar. Okay, we're going to mark one silver dollar, put it in Texas, scramble everything up. We're going to take a person, blindfold them, dispatch them, and have them go and pick up a silver dollar somewhere in the state of Texas. The chance that that person is going to pick up that one silver dollar is the same chance that one person could fulfill just eight of the prophecies. Not very likely. Uh, when Isaiah prophesied the virgin birth, uh, he didn't just say something. He provided a sign. He actually spoke in sign language. That's what it says. This is what Matthew quotes. The Lord said to Isaiah, go out, you and your son, Shear Jashub, to meet Ahaz. Say to him, be careful. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. Be careful. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. Aram, Ephraim, and Remaliah's son have plotted your ruin, saying, let us invade Judah. Let us tear it apart, divide it among ourselves. Yet this is what the Sovereign Lord says. It will not take place. It will not happen. The Lord himself will give you a sign. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son and will call him Emmanuel. A virgin birth would be a sign from God What's the message that this birth would bring? Be careful. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. Nations were plotting against nations. People were frightened, restless, afraid. They didn't like what was coming on the horizon. Ahaz was a wicked king. And he really didn't deserve much grace, but God gave him grace, gave him a sign. The child's birth was God saying three things. Be careful, keep calm, don't be afraid. Lily, come on up, Lily. Lily knows ASL sign language. So we're going to learn that three words, because God spoke in sign language through the son. Be careful. How do you do be careful? Okay, here we go. So we're going to practice this. Okay, we're going to do this. So we're going to know this. Okay, so you, you do this with your fingers. You're going to poke your fingers apart like that. This is be careful. Okay, be careful. Be careful. Keep calm. That's easy enough. <laughs> First one's challenging. Okay, we can, you got to be able to do this thing. Okay, then, but keep calm. Don't be afraid. So 
This is fear. And this is don't. Okay. Be careful. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. When should we think about what God is saying? It's appropriate. We'll think about it today. And we'll think about it tomorrow morning when we're with family and opening gifts and then during the day. But it's, it's, the word was given when individuals were facing an uncertain future. This message is for us when we're tempted to be controlled by fear and discouragement. When things look threatening, when we don't know how we're going to be able to, to continue to thrive and exist. When that's the case, think about the baby in the manger. God the Father is the one speaking through the birth of God the Son. What is he saying? Be careful. Don't be controlled by fear and discouragement. Keep calm. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. Let's sing one verse of O Come All Ye Faithful as we close. Everybody stand. Father, thank you for speaking through the Son. Jesus, thank you for gave you to tell us. And we think about what that message was. Be careful. Keep calm. Don't be afraid. Thanks for that. Thanks for the opportunity to think about them and think about your birth and think about what you said to us. In Jesus' name, amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.